Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're going to do a few more examples of finding the area underneath the curve because there is some confusion sometimes about the concept of area underneath the curve when the area is above the x-axis and area on the curve when the area is below the x-axis. Well, it turns out that the area called A1 here in this drawing is indeed positive area and the area over here is indeed negative area. And sometimes we want to call, we want to call this negative area and sometimes we want to look at that as being additional positive area. And so how do we know the difference? When do we use one? When do, do we use the other? Well, let's first understand what the concept of negative area is by solving this particular integral. Let's say that someone asks you to find the area need the curve defined by this equation right there. And the limits of integration are from 0 to 15. And if you did not draw out the curve, if you did not know what that looked like, and you went ahead and tried to find the area need the curve, well, let's see what would happen if we did just that. So first, we're going to integrate this. So this becomes equal to 60x squared divided by 2 minus 6x cubed divided by 3, evaluated from 0 to 15. And of course, we can simplify that a little bit. This becomes equal to 30x squared minus 2x cubed from 0 to 15. And of course, when we plug in the lower limit, we don't get anything. When we plug in the upper limit, we get the following. This is equal to 30 times 15 squared minus 2 times 15 cubed. Well, when you work that out, this is equal to 30 times 15 squared minus, if I take one of these 15s, multiply times 2, I get 30 times 15 squared. And notice that is exactly equal to 0. And so you'd be kind of perplexed and go, wow, that's 0. How can that be? How can the area need a curve be 0? Well, once we draw it out, we probably realize that A1 being positive area and A2 being negative area are probably equal in size and they cancel each other out and therefore the net area is equal to zero. To show that that's true, let's go ahead and do two separate integrals. We first are going to integrate from zero to 10 and then from 10 to 15 and see what we get in each case. Notice that if you plug in 10 for x, we get 600 minus 600, which is 0. That means that's the point where the curve crosses the x-axis. So let's go ahead and integrate the integral from 0 to 10 and see what we get. So the integral from 0 to 10 of the quantity 60x minus 6x squared dx is equal to, well, that would be equal to 60 x squared divided by 2 minus 6x cubed divided by 3 from 0 to 10. So that's equal to 30x squared minus 2x cubed from 0 to 10. And those limits are easy to plug in. Notice when we plug in 0, we get nothing. Plug in 10, we get, uh, let's see, that's 100 times 3. That's 3,000 minus, that would be 100 that would be 1,000 times 2 minus 2,000. Notice that is equal to 1,000, which means the area underneath the curve going from 0 to 10 is equal to 1,000. Let's see what we get when we integrate the second one. So now we're going to integrate from 10 to 15, the same integral, 60x minus 60x, oop, not 60, but 6x squared. That's kind of a mess. 6x squared times dx, and again, by now you realize that this is equal to uh, 60x squared over 2 minus 6x cubed over 3, going from 10 to 15 this time. And so this is equal to uh, 30x squared minus 2x cubed, uh, evaluated from 10 to 15. So when I plug in the limits, see, see what we get. So this becomes equal to uh, 30 times 15 squared. So let's see, 15 squared times 30, that gives us 6750 minus, and just like what we realized here, that's gonna be the same, so that's gonna be 6750, that's for the upper limit, minus when we plug in the lower limit, so we plug that in here, we get 100 times that, that's 3000 minus, plug in the limit there, that's 1,000 times 2, that's 2,000. But notice it's subtracted, so we get 0 minus 1,000. This is equal to a minus 1,000. And sure enough, 
We realize now that A1, which is defined by this integral right here, is equal to 1,000, and A2, which is defined by this integral right here, becomes minus 1,000, and when you add the two together, you do indeed get zero. So you can see here that you always have to be careful about positive and negative area, that you have to understand where the curve crosses the x-axis. You have to understand that you need to put the limits from there to there if you want to just get the positive area, and from there to there when you just want to get the negative area, and when you simply want to get the total area, and you want to combine the positive and the negative area together, then of course you can integrate from 0 to 15, and in this case, the answer will indeed be 0. So that gives you hopefully a better understanding of what we mean by positive and negative area. And we're going to do a few more videos where we can explain why we care and why sometimes the negative area does indeed indicate something and why sometimes we do want to consider the negative area as positive area. So you'll see in just a moment in some other videos how that's done and why we do it that way.